Representative Duffy. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Excuse me. As uh, I travel my district, I, I'm the northwest corridor of Wisconsin. Um, I run into a lot of people who are going through some very difficult times, and they rely upon these benefits to make sure they can bridge that gap between their time of unemployment to the time of their, their next employment. And I think everyone uh, on this panel, everyone in both chambers agrees that when people fall on hard times, we want to be able to help them out. And uh, sometimes it may be several months, sometimes it may go up to 99 weeks. I think m many of our concerns, though, are uh, not on those who truly need the help, who have families, who have young children who need the help of this uh, uh, unemployment benefit, but it's those who abuse the program, those who abuse the system, who don't actually go out there and look for work um, and eat up that benefit um, at a time when they could really find some other kind of employment. And how we, how we weigh and balance to, to weed out the bad actors and provide the benefit to those who truly need the benefit is, I think, the real issue that we struggle with um, uh, in the two chambers. Um, and I guess I would throw to the, to, the, to the panel as a whole, one, you know, if, 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 if we have an unemployed individual who's uh, looking to get back in the market, I mean, I think there's some reasonable steps that we can take to make sure they are aggressively trying to find work. And um, one is to verify, uh, not through lax standards where we do the call and as I think Mr. Uh, Shirk indicated, but to actually verify that they're looking for work. Um, and if they're looking for work but they can't find it, that we encourage them to go get other job skill training. So if they have to transition from one job skill to another, they're going to have a skill set that can actually be used in this ever-changing economy. Um, and, and finally, we've talked about drug testing. I, I mean, I think this just makes sense. If, if you're using drugs and um, you're saying you're looking for work, I would call bogus on that. <laughs> you're not going to get a job if you're doing drugs. Um, there's too many people out there that are engaged and good employees. And uh, so that we would drug test those who are, um, uh, who are getting benefits I think makes sense, and I guess, uh, Mr. Zandi, based on, on your research and study, I mean, do you, would you have any objection to these uh, simple concepts being in place for those to receive unemployment benefits to go through these steps of work search, job training, and drug testing? Well, I, I, I think it's important not to restrict um, UI benefits to unemployed workers who have earned those benefits. I mean, I think that uh, the principle that underpins the unemployment insurance system since it was founded in the Great Depression of the 30s is that if you work uh, and you pay an insurance premium uh, while you're working, that if you lose your job, uh, you should uh, receive a benefit, an insurance payout, and that uh, there should be no restrictions on that. Uh, that uh, and that's what I get nervous about uh, when we start talking about these things. Uh, drug testing, you know, um, I'm not sure it really matters. I mean, the studies that I've seen uh, show that that's not significant in, in areas where we've had drug testing, and it's costly. Someone's got to have to pay for it. And but in moreover, theory, I but just in theory, one, you have no objection to drug testing, though. I mean, one other thing I'd say is I don't know. We're here in an emergency, in, in my view. Uh, what matters most is making sure that we get through this very trying time uh, with an economy that's back on track, and I don't think we should muck it up. Uh, now that this is, I'm all for reform of the UI system. I think there's lots of things we should do, but that's that's one thing I don't think I'd throw into the mix at this point. But but, but to to, to uh, regain my time here, when we when we when we're when we're talking about a benefit that's been promised because it's insurance, that initial promise wasn't at 99 weeks, was it? The agreement was something other than 99 weeks. So if we're going to extend it beyond what you originally bargained for, is it then fair to say if we're going to give you more than what you bargained for? it might be fair to ask for job search, job training, and drug testing? Yeah, but I would say that uh, you know, in every uh, recession since World War II, particularly severe recessions, we've provided benefits, emergency UI. That is part of the deal, in my view. But at, at 99 weeks, have we? Uh, 99 weeks, in this, in the, given the severity of what we've gone through, the no, recession no, no, that saying, we've been, I would say that's part of the no, deal. No, no, I'm saying going back to uh, the Great Depression, 99 weeks. Now this is, I think this is the first time we've gone right. up to I would agree with that. And I guess one of my concerns, is, is, and as I switch gears, we go to this theory of a, a multiplier effect where every dollar spent will 
uh, give us a return of $1.55. Um, I think that same argument was made uh, for the nearly trillion dollar stimulus package. And I think as most Americans look at that, they'll go, I, I, I don't think uh, that that multiplier be, uh, came into effect. Uh, we see the pain continue to grow, even though all those dollars rolled out the door. And to make the same argument that it's going to now work for unemployment benefits, I think the American people will probably reject that. But I see my time is up, and I'll yield back. Darn. <laughs> Maybe we'll have round two. <laughs> Thanks very much. Senator Klobuchar. Well, thank you. My time is not up, so uh, thank you. I